Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Emad and today is a very exciting day for Pixel users. Beside Google's I.O. that has a lot of information that I'm going to talk about in my future videos, we also have Android 13 Beta 2 and I have it installed on my Pixel 6 Pro. This is the first time to install Android 13 on the Pixel 6 models to show you every new change. But before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming videos. And now, let's jump in. Let's start with the build number really quick. And here on the 6 Pro, it's TPBB220414.015. Let's start with the lock screen. On the left, I have Android 13 Beta 1 and on the right, I have Beta 2. As you see, the media controls are activated on both and I have some notifications as well. But as you see, there is no longer a margin between the media controls and the uh, notification icons, while in Beta 1, there is a small margin between the two. The second change is in the emergency page animation. If you take a look here in Beta 2, you will see a slightly different animation when compared to Beta 1. Let me show you this one more time. This is Beta 2 and here is Beta 1. Let's move on to the home screen and the first change is in the notifications dots. As you see here on the phone app, I have a notification dot in gray color in Beta 1, while in Beta 2, it has a dark black color. The wallpaper and the style app got brighter basic colors. As you see, I have the same wallpaper on both, but when I go to basic colors and then swipe to the second page, you will see totally different colors here compared to beta one. They are much brighter and the number of dual colors is much less compared to beta one. So here's a quick preview for some of them to get an idea about how brighter they are in dark and light theme. Next, the home screen drop targets are now better aligned. If you take a look at widget settings, in beta 2, it's perfectly aligned with the home screen preview, but in beta 1, it's slightly shifted towards the right. Also, the system-wide search got some tweaks. First, you will no longer find the search phone menu to modify your system-wide search settings. On top of this, when you swipe up to access the app drawer, you will no longer see the ellipses button that allows you to choose if you want to show the keyboard or not, and also modify your system wide search settings. There is also a new animation when you tap on the search field. It starts from the center and then spreads towards the sides, which is something we didn't have in beta 1. Also, if you take a look here in beta 1, the search takes you to the Google app search instead of the system wide search like in beta 2. Unfortunately, the system wide search is still not fully functional. When you search for anything, all you get is the apps and some Google search results but it doesn't show you things like the app shortcuts, conversations, emails, and more. And now you can also access it from the home screen, not only from the app drawer. Another small visual tweak is the bigger margin between the separator and the icons at the top and the bottom. Now let's move on to the split screen and recent apps. The first change is the new design. When you tap on split top, as you see, the top app is not filling the entire width of the screen which is not the case in the previous version. Let's start the split screen on both to show you another change. In beta 2, when I resize the windows, as you see, the top app is showing the icon while the bottom one is showing a full preview. And when I move to the opposite direction, they will switch. But in beta 1, it will show the app icon in both cases. Another change, the drag and drop buttons like this one are no longer showing in the split screen view, no matter which app you are using. Even when I tap and hold on any of the images, nothing happens, which is not the case in beta one. Talking about the drag and drop, now in beta two, when you use it, you will only see three contacts and the more button, but in beta one, you will see four contacts and more. Now let's talk about the widgets and to be specific, the battery widget got some visual tweak. First, the icons for the pixel buds are totally different now and also the order is different. And when you add it to the home screen, you will see totally different behaviors. In beta two, the devices you have will fill the entire space instead of only showing a small bar for each device. Let me also resize it for you to show you the difference in a bigger view. And also I have my Pixel Buds here to connect to my Pixel 6 Pro running Beta 2 to show you how different it looks now. As you see, the two Buds are now showing one line instead of two separate lines like before. But the icon on the left will show you two Buds instead of only one. And if I put one of the Buds back in its case like this and then give it a few seconds, you will see a different icon here in this bar. As you see, now it shows only one bud and it says right. 
While it looks cleaner than before, but unfortunately you will no longer see the battery percentage for each one. I tried to use only one of the buds for some time to make its battery percentage different from the other one, and after connecting both together, it will show you the average of the battery instead of showing each one separately. Now let's talk about the notifications shade and the quick settings area, starting with the internet type. As you see here, I have a highlight on the Wi-Fi on both because I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. And now in beta 2, when I switch to the cellular data network, I will get the same highlight, which is not the case in beta 1. The second change is the scan QR code tile is no longer working in beta 2, and it also has a different name. It says here scan QR code, while here it says QR code only. Here it's unavailable, but in beta 1, it works just fine. Change number three is the slower animation you get when you collapse the notification shade. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. As you see in beta 2, it's a slightly slower. Now let's talk about the media controls and it got another revamp in beta 2. As you see, all the controls are now showing at the bottom right corner and instead of having a bigger and separated play button. Also, the buttons themselves are different. Now we have the like and dislike buttons instead of the repeat and shuffle. Now all the buttons have a fill color instead of using the outlined icons. The progress bar has a shaded gray color for the part you didn't listen to instead of using a solid color for the whole thing. And there is a bigger margin between the app icon and the song name. The last difference I'm going to show you is in the media output switcher. If you take a look at the inactive devices, you will see the background color matches the album art color, which is not the case in beta one. Here we have only the white color. So let me also change the song to show you another example. As you see now, the background is different, but in beta one, it's using the same background all the time. There is also a small animation in the progress bar. Let's say you are halfway through and then you tapped on the back button. As you see, there is a smooth animation when you do the action, but here in beta one, it happens immediately. And here's how it looks when you play a video. As you see, I have the dismiss button located at the bottom right corner. And instead of being hidden under the tap and hold gesture, like before, also the back and forward buttons are showing and the back button is inactive. But in beta one, when you move to the next video, then the back button will appear. But now both of them appearing already. Now let's talk about the differences under settings. And the first one is in the animation. As you see, when I tap on any of the pages, the animation starts from the center of the screen. But now when you tap on any, you will first get a highlight, which wasn't the case before. And also the animation starts from the side and then moves back to the opposite direction. You will also notice a wider drop down menu everywhere under settings. And this is one of the examples I wanted to show you. Next, under apps, and then go inside any of the apps and scroll all the way down. We used to have a toggle called remove permissions and the free up space. Now it's called pause app activity if unused. And you also have a description here that says remove permissions, delete temporary files and the stop notifications. You will also notice a new menu item here called language, which will allow you to set the language per app separately. And this is one of the features we saw in the developer preview builds of Android 13, but it's gone in beta one and now it's back again. You can also access the same feature under system and then languages and input and then app languages. Next, under display and then display size and text. Then swipe to the left to see the preview of the messages. As you see, the text bubbles are now more rounded. And when you swipe again to see the actual text, as you see, it looks different and also the words are different. And when you scroll all the way down, as you see, the reset button here is now called reset settings and it's located at the bottom right corner. Change number three under display is the reposition of the screensaver option under the appearance section instead of showing at the very bottom of the screen. The last change under settings is in sound and vibration. When you scroll all the way down, you will see a toggle here says always show icon when in vibrate mode. And now when I switch to the vibrate mode, you will see this icon in the status bar, which wasn't the case before. And we first saw this feature in Android 12 QPR 3 beta 3, and now it's part of Android 13 beta 2. Now let me show you some random tweaks throughout the OS. And the first one is in the clipboard editor. Now when I copy text and then go to the editor, you will see a redesigned page with material U support. But in beta one, when you do the same action, as you see, the page looks different. Now you have a done button instead of copy and the page matches your device theme. The done button does exactly the same thing as copy. So when I tap on done, it will include the newly added text. 
and that's exactly the same you will also see a different color for the background of the editor when i tap done on both as you see this one has a background color instead of using a white color the mic and the camera access indicators now use different animations so for example when i open the camera on beta one you will see it comes very fast and then changes to a dot but in beta 2 it will slide slowly and then change into a dot similarly the recording or using the mic will do the same animation so i will delete this recording and then try to record again here is beta 1 and here is beta 2. Now let's talk about the performance and software issues in this build to help you decide if it's a good idea to install it on your daily driver or not. First, I face a lot of shutter and lag while using the OS. Not only this, but I have a very weird bug that makes my screen dimmer without activating the extra dim feature. And this only happens in the home screen. So for example, my brightness is almost 80%. And as you see, my home screen doesn't look like 80%. But once I open any of the apps, the brightness increases and reaches the expected level. And once I go back home, it becomes a lot dimmer. Also keep in mind that the system-wide search is still not fully functional yet, and you will lose a lot of features from it. And regarding the Geekbench score, it's slightly higher than the stable version. As you see here, I used to have 2779 for the multi-core score, but now I'm getting 2834, which is not a huge difference, but at least you are getting some performance gains. But you might feel that the device is slower due to the shutter lag and issues in the animation. So that's pretty much it for today. That was everything new in Android 13 Beta 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I will definitely create a follow-up video in case I spotted any more features, so stay tuned for this one. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.